Hello everyone, today I'm going to do a review of the Jackson National Perspective 2 annuity with the Lifeguard Freedom Flex Income Rider. For those that don't know me, my name is Dieter Scherer. I'm an independent, fee-only financial planner. That means that I don't receive commissions for financial products, nor do I sell annuities. So today I'm going to perform an objective review of the Jackson National Perspective 2 variable annuity with Lifeguard Freedom Flex Rider. Last October, I posted a review of this annuity, and since then, numerous changes have occurred to this product, and I've developed an upgraded version of my annuity review model that gives us a more in-depth analysis of the annuity. So, as usual, this video is a companion to a blog post. In the post, I go over the general outline of the annuity and the expenses associated with the different features of the annuity. If you are viewing this on YouTube, a link to the blog post will be in the description below the video. Now this video comes in three parts. First, I'm going to outline the features and expenses of the Jackson National Perspective 2 variable annuity with the Lifeguard Freedom Flex Rider. In the second section of the video, we'll bring out the Excel model and break down how the annuity actually functions. And in part three, I'm going to show you the summary of the return results you could reasonably expect from this annuity based on rolling 20 and 30 year periods since 1926. I think seeing how the annuity would perform in all types of markets will help you develop reasonable expectations about how this annuity might perform for you. In part three, I'm also going to weigh the pros and cons of the annuity to help aid you with your buying decision. So, before we get started, I need to show this disclosure page. This is being recorded, so you can pause the video now and read through the disclosures before we begin. Now that's done with, let's begin. Like all annuities, investors looking to purchase the Jackson National Perspective 2 are typically doing so for the features that this annuity offers that may protect against downside risk. The Jackson National Annuity has the following features. Because it is a variable annuity, it acts as a bucket into which you put your money. You then invest the money in that bucket into different mutual funds within the annuity. These mutual funds are called sub-accounts and are only invested in by investors within variable annuities. Because variable annuities have contract values that go up and down with the market, they normally offer some sort of death benefit before you annuitize the annuity, which means to begin the withdrawal phase of the annuity. This benefit basically offers you the greater the value of your annuity at the time of death or the amount you originally invested. And finally, the guaranteed minimum withdrawal benefit is just the technical name for the Lifeguard Freedom Flex Rider. Basically, it means that once the for life income guarantee is in effect, your income from the product will never drop below the guaranteed amount, subject to certain restrictions, of course. So the guarantees of variable annuities are what most investors want from an annuity. So how does the Lifeguard Freedom Flex Rider work? Well. The Lifeguard Freedom Flex is a guaranteed minimum withdrawal benefit rider, and it's advertised as offering a 7% guaranteed compound rate of return on your investment for the first 10 years or until you begin withdrawals. And once you switch on the income for the annuity and the guaranteed income for life feature is in effect, you can never outlive the stream of income. Now, while a 7% rate of return sounds fantastic in today's low yield environment, it doesn't work the way you would typically think. The 7% is actually calculated on another value that we'll just call the income base for now, that is separate from the cash value, which is the amount you can walk away with today if you were to cash the annuity out. This is very complicated, so that's what we're going to be delving into within the annuity review today. So just pay close attention over the next few slides and within the Excel model breakdown itself. Another feature of the Lifeguard Freedom Flex is the guaranteed withdrawal balance adjustment. Remember the income base I was talking about earlier? Well, there are numerous names for it and guaranteed withdrawal balance is just another name for the same thing. Basically, this return guarantees that the income base, the amount your income will be calculated off of, will increase to 200% of your initial investment after 12 years. For example, the income base will increase from $100,000 to 
Say you were guaranteed a 5% distribution each year, your lowest income possible would have increased from $5,000 per year to $10,000 per year. However, there are some caveats. Like I said, this applies only to the income base of the annuity, not the cash value. So you could not take away that $200,000 and walk away with it. The income base is a separate entity from the cash value of your account. And it's void if any withdrawals or required minimum distributions are taken before the end of year 12. Now this used to be before the end of year 10. Um, the 200% the guarantee would kick in after 10 years, but they've increased the amount of time by two years. In the next slide, we'll be going over how the step ups and all of these different things work together. In this slide, we're going to be going over how the step ups work and how those interact with the 7% bonus and the contract value to increase the guaranteed minimum withdrawal benefit base. Now remember, the guaranteed minimum withdrawal benefit base has no cash value, but it is what is used to determine the income when you start withdrawing from the annuity. So in this example, I chose the first year of data that's available, which is 1926. Remember, this is three years before Black Tuesday in October of 1929. So between years three and four, you will see the massive losses in the contract value because we're kicking off the Great Depression. The large losses allow us to see how the bonuses and the step-ups kick into the income rider and how that affects the growth of the benefit base in dire economic times. In this example, if you look at the contract value and the bonuses and everything at year zero, they're all $100,000. Well, the bonus automatically kicks in and increases the $100,000 to $107,000. The contract value, on the other hand, grew to 107824 That's greater than $107,000. So out of the two, it's the one that's selected. That number is then compared to the guaranteed minimum withdrawal benefit base from the year before, $100,000. Well, $107,824 is greater than $100,000. So it's the one that's selected between those two. Therefore, the new guaranteed minimum withdrawal benefit base is stepped up to 107,824. Let's look at how that happens in between year one and two. In this case, we have the guaranteed minimum withdrawal benefit base of 107,824. Well, the step ups will increase that, the, or the bonus will multiply that by 7% and get 7,547. It will then add the 7,547 to the 107,824 to get 115,371. That's the new bonus base in year two. The contract value, on the other hand, had increased to 143,000. So 143,000 is greater than 115,000. So again, the contract value is the one selected between those two. 143,000 is compared to 107,000. 143,000 is greater, so the new income base is 143,000. In year six, we have a stepped up bonus base of $243,000. That's greater than the contract value of $68,000. Therefore, the bonus value is the one that is selected. That's then compared to the guaranteed minimum withdrawal benefit base from the year before of $227,000. Therefore, $243,000 is greater and the new income base, guaranteed minimum withdrawal benefit base is $243,000. In this slide, I've selected all of the values that were selected for the income base, whatever the income base was stepped up to each year. So within the first few years, we see that the contract value was the higher of the bonus or the contract value, and therefore the base was stepped up to that. In later years, when the market has taken losses due to the Great Depression, the 7% bonus dominates the contract value, and therefore the guaranteed minimum withdrawal benefit base is stepped up in those periods. In year 13, 
at the beginning of year 13 after 12 years, we see that the guaranteed met, or with the guaranteed withdrawal balance adjustment of $200,000 is greater than the contract value at that point, but the guaranteed minimum withdrawal benefit base is much higher at $322,000 because it had just taken a withdrawal. Therefore, we didn't need to take into account the $200,000 in terms of stepping up the base to that point. Next, we're gonna cover the income schedule, the surrender schedule, and the expenses within the annuity. The percentage of the guaranteed income base that you can withdraw from the annuity is dependent upon the age at which you begin withdrawals. In our examples today, I assume that the retiree has selected to use the optional income upgrade percentages. There is a fee differential between the two, which we'll cover in a minute. In this case, if you're age 76 when you start taking income and you have elected to add the optional income upgrade to your account, you can withdraw up to 5.5% each year. This is an amount we'll be entering into the Excel sheet later because we'll start with a 65-year-old retiree and they won't begin withdrawals until the beginning of year 11. So now we'll go over some of the fees. Typically, a variable annuity pays a 6 to 7% commission to the agent or broker that sells the annuity. Now that's why the insurance company charges you a surrender charge. Basically, if you don't stay in the annuity long enough for the company to make a profit, you pay a surrender charge. As the years goes, goes on, the insurance company needs less from you to recoup those costs because they've been deducting annual expenses from your account each year. So the surrender charge decreases each year until it goes to 0% in year seven. The surrender charge is a separate expense from the annual fees associated with the account. And as such, it will be listed on a separate line in the model that we're going to be looking at. Here are the base expenses for this annuity, which include the mortality and expense charge and the administrative charge. Those add up to a total of 1.3% as the base fee for the annuity. Then as we move on, we look at the expenses for the Lifeguard Freedom Flex Income Rider. Now we selected the Lifeguard Freedom Flex Rider with optional income upgrade and a 7% bonus, an annual step up, which costs 1.5% broken up into quarterly payments. Now it's important to note that this charge is calculated based upon your income base, not your contract value. However, it is subtracted from your contract value. You'll see how this works in a moment. The maximum charge for the rider we are using today is 3%, and fees can be increased at each contract anniversary. If you do not wish to pay higher fees, you can cancel future step-ups. Once canceled, you can then reinitiate the rider if at any point within the first 10 years you wish to have increased step-ups, and you can pay the then current rider fees to restart the step point the step ups at that point. Here are the total expenses that we are including in the model today. We have the base annuity fees, which include the M&E expenses and the administrative expenses. We also have the sub account expenses, which are the mutual funds within the variable annuity, and those are 0.59%. The annuity fee is 1.3%. Then we have the GMWB rider. That means the guaranteed minimum withdrawal benefit rider expenses, also known as the lifeguard freedom flex rider for this annuity. And that totals to 1.5% in expenses. You could also have added a upgraded death benefit rider to this annuity and it would have cost you, I believe another 0.8% However, we're not including that. And if there were any management fees, we could have plugged them in here as well. So the total expenses that are going to the model today are 3.39%. Now, unlike many other variable annuities with income riders, the Jackson National Perspective 2 does not require you to restrict your investments to a conservative allocation once you elect an income rider such as the Lifeguard Freedom Flex. 
meaning you can utilize a more aggressive portfolio in order to maximize the possible returns and thereby increase your income base high watermark. Now there are only a few data sets that reach back to 1926, when the first good sets of US data first became available. Therefore, we will concentrate on the S&P 500 and long-term government bonds, both of which have accurate data spanning back until 1926. In order to give the annuity a fair shot and present as unbiased a case I can, I've utilized the lowest cost subaccounts available that would replicate an allocation to the S&P 500 and long-term government bonds. However, in the model today, like I said, we're going to use a 100% allocation to the S&P 500. And finally, right before we get into the model, here is the probability of a 65-year-old living to different ages based upon the 2009 Social Security Actuaries Period Life Table, which is the most up-to-date table they offer on their website. I've built this calculation into the model to show you the probability that the investor will live up until the break-even points. But as you can see here, we're just measuring to different ages. So a 65-year-old investor has, on average, a bit less than a 50-50% chance to reach 85, and on average, less than a 10% chance to reach 95. This is just important to take note of when you're looking at how long it takes to recover the principal of your investment from the income rider and how long you may expect to receive income payments. Now this is going to differ based on your health and your genetics. However, it's good to just keep in mind. So now I'm going to go fire up the Excel model and I will be right back with you. All right, now it's time to get into the real nitty gritty technical aspects of how this annuity functions. Here we have the Excel model that I've built to evaluate variable annuities with income riders. First we're going to go over the assumptions and then I'm going to break down the annuity. So we have an initial investment of $100,000, a distribution rate of 5.5%. Remember, that's because we have the income upgrade and the income starts at age 76. Here we have the guaranteed minimum withdrawal benefit expenses. These are the expenses for the Lifeguard Freedom Flex. Here we have the annuity and subaccount expenses. And here we have the total nominal fees. We're going to begin at age 65. And the year to begin is 1928. I chose that year because it comes up as the median return for a number of different metrics. And I wanted to show what is the 50th percentile for returns for this annuity. So here we have the probability that a 65 year old lives to the break even point of 83. In this case, the break even point is when you receive back your initial $100,000 in income payments. So once the insurance company pays you back your initial investment. So there's a 52% chance that a 65 year old will live to 83 based on the most recent social security data. Now let's get started. So I cleared away most of the other stuff in here so that we can just look at the bare bones basics of this. Here we have the calendar years. As you can see, we have age 65, age 85 after 20 years and age 95 after 30 years, but we're gonna keep it on calendar years. So we start in 1928, 1929, 1930 and so on. Here we have the years, so it starts at year zero, meaning time zero, right when you get the annuity, and then after one year, after two years, after three years, and so on. Here are the net total income. So I give the insurance company $100,000. That means that I do not have control of that $100,000 right now. Yes, you can put it into the sub accounts and all of that, but I have not received any income from that $100,000 yet. So my income is negative and it doesn't increase until you start receiving income from the insurance company. Here we have the total income received. So the sum of all of the income payments from the insurance company to you. Here we have the Lifeguard Freedom Flex's income base. It stands for Guaranteed Minimum Withdrawal Benefit Base. That's what the Lifeguard Freedom Flex is. And remember, it is the higher of the contract value the 
value of the base the year before, the 7% step up, or the 200% return guarantee. And the 7% step up is in place up until income starts. The 12-year the 12 200% return guarantee doesn't come into play here because the value of the income base is over $200,000 by year 12. Here we have the contract value. It's 100% invested in stocks. Remember, this is the value of the subaccounts underneath, so it's 100% in the S&P 500. Here's the profit or loss of the annuity. This is the sum of any market increases over here, plus any income that we've received, minus the initial investment. And right now it's at negative 8,500 because if you were to purchase the annuity and wait after your 10 day free look period, you would be hit with a surrender charge of 8.5% if you wanted to sell it immediately after the free look period, or not sell it, but cash it out. So that would cause an $8,500 loss because you haven't had any growth from the annuity, you, you haven't had any income, so there would be a loss there. And for quite some time, we see that, that, that those are negative in this case. Here we have the return on the income rider itself. So this is just calculating it based on the income stream. And if we look at it, it takes until the break-even point, and you can see the break-even point is right here, the point at which we receive at least $100,000 back for this to become positive. So after 17 years, it's about $100,000, but the break-even point is really you know, year 18, when it becomes positive 0.72%. So after 18 years, the total return on the income rider is 0.72%. And after 20 years, it's 1.78%. And after 30 years, it's 3.55%. Now, remember, the 7% guarantee that is advertised is only reflecting the bump-ups that would occur over here if the 7% is going to create a value that's greater than the contract value. So those end at the end of year 10. Over here we have the nominal total return of the portfolio. Nominal basically means before I adjust it for inflation. So here we see that it, because this is a time period that has a lot of market volatility, remember 1929, in October, we have the Great Crash and Black Tuesday. So that kicks off a lot of the market volatility of the next few years and eventually leads to the Great Depression. So we see that reflected in the total return of the portfolio. At first, we have a positive return because we have some good market gains that year. Then we have a slightly less positive return because we have a loss that next year and then we start seeing very negative returns until the account is depleted. And this is due to a couple of things that it becomes depleted. One, the high fees from the annuity that are levied on the contract value and the subaccounts, and also beginning withdrawals that are based on the highest amount that the, the value has increased to. So, because it, the account is depleted after that many years, your total return is the return on the income rider. So if we look at that in real terms, we can see, okay, after inflation, what is the return on the income rider? What is the return, the total portfolio return? In this case, we're just going to really be looking at the return on the income rider. So. After 20 years, the return on the income rider, after you take inflation into account, is 0.19%. So it only beat inflation by 0.19%. And after 30 years, the return on the income rider is 1.85%. So it only beat inflation by 1.85%. Now, that's a little difficult to see as just a percentage rather than an actual income stream. So I'm going to click this button over here, turn on the 
income options that we have over here. So after 11 years, when in the income starts, you have an income of $14,000. And that pretty much stays constant. It gets a little bit of a bump up, but because the contract value is depleted, you're no longer going to have any market growth step ups. And there are no guarantees after you start the income stream. So you're maintaining a $14,239 income stream throughout this time period. Now there was deflation, meaning prices actually decreased compared to the year before during the 1930s. So at the beginning, your real income in 1928 dollars is actually $17,000 rather than the $14,000 you are actually receiving that year. And as we can see, your purchasing power goes down over time until it, it loses about half of its purchasing power by year 30. So while your income, your stable income stream is guaranteed for life, it's going to lose purchasing power over time if it's constant. Now let's compare these to a portfolio that you're just withdrawing a percentage of it each year. Again, this is the Great Depression era where 100% stock portfolio would have gotten major losses. And you know, most retirees aren't in a 100% stock portfolio. They're, they're in like a 60-40 or some variation that's much more conservative. But if we were to show you, let's just take a percentage out each year of a 100% stock portfolio, what would that look like? And here we go. So the profit or loss column is, is important to look at. So with the annuity, after 20 years, you have a $42,000 profit. After 20 years, despite all of the market volatility and, and the, the serious losses you would have had during the Great Depression, the if you had just held on and, and followed your plan, you would have had $106,000 profit after 20 years. Now, the return on just the income stream would have been a little bit negative, but your total return on the portfolio, the income you've received so far, and because you have contract value left, it would have been positive. It would have been a positive 3.7%. Now, I'm not saying that buy and hold is the very best situation for dealing with a financial crisis, but even so, on a total return basis, it outperforms the annuity. And in, in cases where people are worried about financial crises, crises, they're piling into this type of guaranteed return. So let's look at after 30 years, the income stream itself has a 2.46% return, but the total return on the portfolio, because there's a $370,000 contract value at the end of this period and a $478,000 profit, well, the total return on the portfolio is 6%. Compare that to a depleted portfolio and $184,000 profit. So if we look at this in real t uh, terms, real returns, we see that it's negative on the income rider, but there's no income rider. It's just the income stream. And it's positive 2% on the total return value because we've beaten by inflation by a little bit, which is, which is great, by 2%. And it's 0.78% after 30 years and 4.28% total return after 30 years. And your profit is, is much higher. So let's look at the income stream. How would that compare to the annuities income stream? At first, it is much smaller. However, it grows over time and helps you keep pace with inflation. Remember, the annuity only had about $8,000 worth of purchasing power at the end of the 30-year period, whereas this method has $14,000 worth of purchasing power because of the growth of the contract value over that period. I'll just switch back just to show you. Now, if we were to take another approach, a dynamic income approach, that we had a more stable income, let's see how that would perform. 
basically the dynamic approach will increase your income payments by inflation in years that do well and decrease it in years that where you've withdrawn too much or the markets have done poorly. But it, it won't ever decrease it below the payment you had the year before. Now let's just look at it. I'll show you. So as we can see, we have a very stable real income over time. It's about $6,700, and then it goes down just a little bit. You lose a little bit of purchasing power here. But we have, again, $410,000 left at the end of this period. So if we wanted to increase the initial withdrawal to, say, like 7%, so we had a much higher withdrawal at the beginning of the time period, we would still have a very stable income and our profit or loss would have been much higher than with the annuity of 5.5% 5 .5 and 184000 So when you look at these, you, you really have to consider what would happen in worst case scenarios. And this is not the worst case scenario. This is a median scenario for most of the, the metrics that we're looking at in terms of returns after 20 and 30 years. So there have been worse periods than the Great Depression to utilize an annuity. And there have been periods where an, an annuity would have done better, but we're going to be looking at all of those and a summary of all of those results in the PowerPoint. So I'm going to close this up and, and bring the PowerPoints back and I will see you over there. In this slide, I'm going to present the summary of the results from the model. All rates of return are presented as real rates of return, meaning that the rate of return after inflation is taken into account. I've done this to normalize the returns over different periods of inflation and to see how well the retiree's purchasing power would be preserved. For example, a 10% return doesn't matter if the price of everything is increased by 15%. So a real return of 0% means that the purchasing power of the annuitant's income stream has equaled inflation. A positive real return means your purchasing power has grown faster than inflation, and a negative real return means that you have lost purchasing power to inflation. So here we have three scenarios. We have a pessimistic scenario, a median scenario where half of all values are greater and half of all values are less, and then an optimistic scenario. The median return after 20 years on the guaranteed minimum withdrawal benefit on the Lifeguard Freedom Flex is negative 0.5%. And 53% of returns of situations lose purchasing power over 20 years. The median return after 30 years is 0.81%. And 38% of the time, the income rider loses purchasing power to inflation. Portfolio survival is only 30 years, meaning how long is there's still $1 left in the, into the account. And as we can see, 53% of the time, the ending values are less than or equal to 30 years. So if you're using this to leave an inheritance, most of the time, even in this best case scenario, using 100% stock portfolio, your ending value, your portfolio survival is going to be on average 30 years. The break-even point is 17 years, which gives a 65-year-old a 55.7% chance to live to 82. Here we have the ending values. So in a pessimistic scenario, there will be a zero left after 20 years and $145,000 left after 20 years in a, in a median scenario. And after 30 years, we have both the 10th percentile. In the pessimistic scenario, we have $0. And the median scenario, we have $0. And 53% of the time, the ending values are going to be equal to zero. And then finally, we have the median scenarios. So 20-year real returns, and these are for total returns, meaning income stream plus the ending value of the portfolio. And we have 2.18% after 20 years, and 33% of returns lose purchasing power. Or 33% of scenarios lose purchasing power. And we have about 1.4% here, and 31% of scenarios lose purchasing power. Now, here are the summary results for the 100% stocks portfolio and a 5.5% withdrawal. After 20 years, we have a 0.22% real return on the income rider, 2.1% after 30 years. 
we have a $519,000 ending value after 20 years and a $712,000 ending value after 30 years. And 0% of values, ending values, are equal to 0 after 20 and 30 years. Then finally, we have the total returns of 7.07% after 20 years and 5.92% after 30 years. And 0% of returns are less than or equal to 0, meaning 0 scenarios lost purchasing power to inflation. In this slide, I've done a comparison just to make it easily accessible. So on the left here, we have the annuity. And here on the right, we have the portfolio. So as you can see, in almost every scenario, the portfolio has better metrics over time. If we look at the ending values, if you're trying to use this for growth and income, after 20 years, 145,000 versus 519. After 30 years, zero versus 712. Then we have the total returns of 2.18% versus 7%, 1.36% versus 5.92%. And over here, you can see the percentages, the ones I, I looked at earlier. They're just showing you how many scenarios are losing purchasing power to inflation or equal to zero or surviving less than 30 years. As you can see on most every metric, the simple portfolio of 100% stocks and 5.5% withdrawals outperforms the annuity. So in the next slide, now that you've looked over all these results of the model and how each one would do, we're going to go into the advantages and disadvantages of the annuity. All right, now to break down the advantages and disadvantages of the Jackson National Perspective 2 Variable Annuity with a Lifeguard Freedom Flex Income Rider. So the advantages first. It offers a stable income stream. As we saw in the annuity model, the Jackson National provides a predictable income stream that does not go down despite fluctuations in the stock market. And it can even grow with the stock market and with uh, if the stock market continues to grow after you elect the income rider it offers some some potential growth while you have the income stream turned on the jackson national also offers a unrestricted allocation a lot of other annuities have a, they force you to do a more conservative allocation which limits their liability because you won't have as large of gyrations and fluctuations in returns. With a 60-40 portfolio, you're less likely to see 50% gains one year and 25% losses the next year than, uh, than with S&P 500 only. That's much more volatile and you're much more likely to see higher gains, which leads to the higher step ups and is to your advantage. So now the disadvantages. The high fees associated with the income riders, the sub accounts, and the annuity itself limit the growth of the contract value of your account, which limits the ending value in the 20 and 30 year periods, which causes less portfolio survivability. We have a 17 year break even point. Now you might ask, okay, it has a median 17 year break even point versus the S&P 500s and the percent withdrawals 16.5 year. Well, as we saw in those other other slides, the S&P 500, the 100% allocation to stocks and just withdrawing a percentage of the portfolio each year is much more likely to have a value of some sort at the end of a 20 or 30 year period whereas the Jackson National is much less likely to have some sort of ending contract value. So you're much more dependent on the income stream that is providing than you are with just a normal portfolio of stocks. So it's very important that you get your money back as quickly as possible if you're so, so that you can start getting a return 
on your investment instead of just a return of your investment. So it's going to take 17 years for you to get back your initial $100,000 or however long, however much you invested in this um, from the income stream. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we have a lower probability of 30-year portfolio survival versus the 100% stock portfolio. In most cases, we saw in the pessimistic scenario, we had a zero dollar ending value a and the optimistic or the the median scenario we had a zero dollar ending value and in the optimistic scenario we did have an um, a positive ending value but it was much less likely to be for your portfolio to survive 30 years than it was with the 100 percent stock portfolio so we we didn't have a whole lot of protection there uh, because of all of the withdrawals and the high fees that really just drain the account down and finally, as we saw, the income rider itself, which is built for income for life, may not even keep up with inflation in most scenarios. We saw over 50% of the time, after just 20 years, the income rider's return was slightly negative, meaning each year you lost money to inflation. You lost purchasing power. And individuals that are planning to use this as the backbone of their retirement planning should take pause there because you need to keep up with inflation and most likely continue to increase your expenses towards the end of your life because of greater health care expenses that you may experience. So that wraps up today's annuity review of the Jackson National Perspective 2 with Lifeguard Freedom Flex Income Rider. If you have any questions about this annuity review, please submit them to questions at realizeyourretirement.com. And if you're viewing this on my blog, you can also subscribe to blog updates and free educational content by putting your email into the form at the bottom of this post. I'd also like to provide you with a special offer. I'd like to offer you a free retirement income report at freeretirementblueprint.com. The report will offer you a look at your projected income during retirement under a number of different economic situations. Once you have the blueprint, you'll have a better idea about whether you'll run out of money during retirement, whether you're saving enough for retirement, and when you might be able to retire. It's 100% free, and there are no obligations or strings attached. You'll even get a chance to have some personal feedback from me or another financial planner at our firm. Just plug in the promo code JNPII13 to the report form to qualify for the offer. I hope everyone has gotten a lot of value out of this review today. If you think your friends would find this of value, please share the article on Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn, or share it via email using the buttons at the bottom of the post. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.